Well, for more on how troubles at GM may impact Michigan's economy, I'm joined now by Michigan Governor Jennifer Granholm. Uh, Governor, thank you so much for joining us. I know you're, uh, you're coming to us from Chicago, where you're meeting with President-elect Barack Obama. Uh, Obama talking quite a bit, uh, recognizing the hardship of the auto industry uh, on your state. Uh, tell me right now, where does uh, President-elect Obama stand uh, in terms of federal aid for the auto industry? Well, he made a statement that you probably are aware of, which said that he certainly supports and recognizes the importance of the auto industry as being the backbone of American manufacturing. I think that uh, there is an understanding that the auto industry uh, cannot fail, but there's, uh, but he certainly has asked for the president to speed up whatever they can do to get that retooling money to the auto industry and to work with a transition team to review what policy options are available to ensure that the auto industry survives this uh, utter um, you know, challenge, I'll just say, in mm. the financial markets. Uh, that retooling money, are you specifically referring to um, uh, the uh, possible $50 billion in loans to the auto industry or something else? What I'm referring to is the first $25 billion that was um, linked to the increases in the CAFE standards under the energy bill. That already was appropriated, it was authorized, and it was passed by Congress. It was initially being held up bec uh, in order to write the regulations. It's my understanding those regulations have now been written and so that money needs to start flowing. However, that is not money that is going to address the immediate problem that the auto industry has in terms of staying afloat between now and the time this overall financial crisis is resolved. As you can see, because of consumer confidence, people have not been purchasing, making large purchases like automobiles. Mm. And so consequently, you're seeing these third quarter numbers come out from Ford, GM and Chrysler that are not encouraging. And so they may need some additional assistance. Uh, quite alarming indeed. Governor, uh, have you been, uh, outside of uh, the uh, meeting you've had with, with uh, President-elect Obama, I mean, have you been disappointed thus far, though, uh, with the administration's response uh, to the problems of the auto industry? You mean the current administration? The Correct. Bush administration? Absolutely. You know, the Bush administration, I can just tell you as the governor of Michigan, we've lost or we will have lost by the end of this year 400,000 jobs related to manufacturing, largely automotive. There's just been no manufacturing policy coming out of the current administration. And I, you know, I know the election's over and this is not sour grapes, but it's just a reality. Mm -hmm. Whether it's uh, issues related to uh, having, um, having support for workers being retrained or having support for the industry and keeping their intellectual property when they try to locate somewhere else. I'm just telling you, there's been very, very little industrial or manufacturing policy in this country. That's why having a president who is going to stand up for these jobs and these manufacturers in this country, encouraging them to invest and stay in this country where it's possible, that is really important for a state like Michigan and for the industrial Midwest. Uh, Governor, realistically, when do you expect some action, some real action to take place, uh, either from the current administration or from the next administration uh, for the auto industry? Well, you heard, uh, I mean, overall, clearly there needs to be action on the economy right away. And, and the president-elect said and encouraged there to be a stimulus package before this Congress leaves, before this current administration leaves. But he did say if that doesn't happen, that's going to be one of the first things he does as president. He also knows and has charged his transition team with taking a look at what the options are to keep and make sure that the auto industry thrives. So you're going to see several steps, I think, take place from the, the naming of a terrific economic uh, team that he's going to put in place to encouraging the existing Congress to take action and to the steps that he'll take as president once he assumes uh, the office and takes the oath of office. Governor, uh, obviously we have to include the, uh, the worst case scenario, which is that one of these or one or several of these automakers go under. Uh, tell me the impact that would have on your state in terms right. of your tax base, your cost of borrowing, what exactly would happen? Well, let me just say that the auto industry is not just Michigan. Obviously, the three Detroit automakers, the domestic automakers, there was a study that was just done two days ago by the Center for Automotive Research that says that if this auto industry fails, it would mean five million jobs across the nation. You've got suppliers, you've got people who service the auto industry, you have those who work directly in the auto industry. It would have an enormous ripple effect across the nation. This is why it is so important that we have this auto industry 
survive and thrive. There is no future automobile that should not be made in this United States, especially as it leads to our energy independence. The link between the energy industry and the auto industry is very, very strong. Senator, uh, President-elect Obama recognizes that, recognizes the importance of the industry. And so I think that you'll see and they will see a great partner in this next president. Okay. Governor, thank you very much for joining us on Final Word. Governor Jennifer Granholm of Michigan talking about the impact of the automakers and the auto industry on her state.